Hey everyone, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel. I have been away for a little longer than I hoped I would be, um, but honestly over the past month or so I've just taken a break because I work from home, uh, obviously because of the quarantine, and I'm always on the computer and I just needed to do something else for a while. So I'll probably start talking about some of the other things that I actually get into creatively on this channel, but we are back with another game development uh, or devlog update. And I'm excited to show you what I've done in the meantime, because I did actually do a little bit of work in with the break itself. So let's take a look at the updates I've made to the game since the last devlog, which is number 7, which makes this devlog number 8. So the first thing I did in this update anyway is to add the new characters to the game. So I have my fox and my crow here, and I wanted to do something a bit different because I'm not using like a full sprite sheet for either of these two characters. Whereas on the sort of main player character, there's a full sprite sheet for her animations. For the fox and the crow, I'm dividing up the sprites into sort of three chunks each. And then I'm going to play around with what I can do to each of those three pieces to animate the character. So for example, for the fox, I'm going to animate the tail separately from the head and the body. And for the crow, I'm going to animate the head separately from the body. And it's just a bit of a different technique that I'm using. Uh, on these characters than I am on the main character, but I'm hoping I can come up with some cool stuff because of it. So once I had my individual pieces of the characters' bodies that I wanted to animate, I added them into Godot, and uh, each one of these characters is basically just a static object 2D with separate parts, and uh, each one of those parts can be animated individually. So I think I'm eventually going to try to create a character that actually uses bones and animate using the bones. Uh, but for the crow and the fox, they're fairly simple. They're just a bunch of different sprites, and I'm going to rotate and resize those sprites as needed in order to create something convincing. So here I am just testing out whether the collision shapes on the fox and the crow actually work properly. And I want my crow to be sort of sitting on the tree stumps that are around the game. So I had to offset the sprites themselves from the sort of origin of that scene. But it works pretty well. Um, the player is colliding with the tree stump and not the crow, but it looks like it does the job. Next up was actually animating the fox and the crow. And to try to keep it as simple as possible, for the fox I actually am reusing the same shader that's on the trees and the flowers, uh, just applying that shader to the tail. And for the crow, I'm just animating the crow's head, looking up and down and around a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to have to exaggerate this because it's a little bit difficult to actually see the crow's head is actually moving because it's so small on the screen. But for now, I think it's all right. So once I had those two animations finished, uh, I realized I wanted my character to be able to interact with things in the world. And I want to indicate to the player what is interactionable and what isn't. So I tried to come up with some interact icons that would pop up when the player was actually standing on or near an item that you could actually interact with. So I came up with a few different ideas just to test those and see what they would look like, but uh, I think I'm going to come back to this as I improve and tweak the UI. But since it currently works, it's something good to build upon for later. The next thing I did was to add a to-do list, and I guess this serves as the quest log for this pretty short game. Um, this is going to tell the player what they're actually looking for and doing in the world, and it's going to sort of drop some hints as to some of the mysteries that I'm going to include for this pretty short story. I realized that the player would probably need to pick up the list and pick up the bug net before they could actually use them, so I added them as items in the world, and basically as the player walks over them, it updates an inventory variable, and now the player can actually use both the list and the bug net, but only after they've actually walked over them to pick them up. And finally, just for debugging purposes, in the upper left hand corner, you've probably noticed my little FPS counter that I've added. Basically that's just a label that's sort of updating every single frame. Um, but I've added a few more variables that I'm holding in a sort of player stats singleton and this is going to keep track of what you have and haven't done as you walk around in the three different areas. So this obviously won't be there for the final game, I'm just keeping it there so I can keep track um, and make sure that everything is actually working properly. So one of the things that you can see in that list is field visits right underneath the FBS counter and that's going to increment every time you actually visit the field. 
because certain events are going to trigger and I have to figure out <laughs> how to even implement some sort of cutscene system. But uh, certain events will trigger based on how many times you've actually visited the field. So once I enter the field, you can see that the counter goes up by one and it'll keep doing that just sort of in the background as the player moves around the world. But that's pretty much it. Um, if you haven't noticed it before, you might be able to see that whenever the player swings the net, it actually interacts with the plants. And I thought that was a cool detail, so you can sort of hit the plants as well as actually collect bugs with the net. And that sort of mechanic is going to come into play, I think, in some way as you're searching for one of the items that's in your to-do list. And uh, really, I'll just sort of experiment and see what I can come up with. But I think the current to-do list is a pretty good base for some of the gameplay elements that I'm considering adding. And with that, I think I'll end the video there. I hope you all are doing safe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks.